Hi, today for Think for a Change, I'm going to talk about the meaning of life. There really isn't one. But that doesn't mean we need to be full of despair and depressed. Because actually, there's a really good way to think about this. My dad says that if we don't have spiritual grounding in these dark times of the world, we'll feel very lost. And sure, people feel very lost, but we don't need spiritual grounding. Um, that's one way to think about it. Another way is to be very existential. So, that means we have to talk about freedom, we have to talk about choices, and we have to talk about responsibility. And this is what I'm going to say. Um, I know a lot of people who feel very lost, and I have a lot of friends who <laughs> have a difficult time <laughs> um, making decisions and choices. And those are obviously at times very hard things to do, like when you're trying to decide what you're going to do with the rest of your life, for instance. Um, intimidating. But people also have really hard times making decisions and choices about very small things, like what am I going to do with myself today? I don't even know if I should, um, you know, talk to this person or go outside or whatever it is. Um, so. I want to emphasize that choices do add up to something, even the smallest ones, and those are all decisions that we have to make. If we don't make decisions like what to eat, or what to do, or where to go, or anything like that, we'll end up feeling very lost, because there's no movement, then there's very little, there's very little change, everything comes into this standstill and you don't go anywhere, and people can feel paralyzed when they're faced with a choice, especially a really difficult decision. Because I think there's, on one hand, you're facing a decision and you say, I don't want to be wrong, so if I choose one, I might be wrong, and then I'm wrong, and that sucks. Or, I don't want to make a decision because if I make a choice now and, and choose this route, what if a better route comes along? So maybe I'm not right or wrong, but I might miss really good opportunities because I've chosen something else. Well, yeah, okay, so those two uh, possibilities for why people don't want to make choices and decisions are viable, and they're actually on to something. I wouldn't go with the right or wrong choice, though. But about missing something because you choose one, that might be closer to um, one way to think about it, the way that I prefer to think about it. But here's why. I'm a visual thinker, and I imagine ourselves with this horizon. We're walking into a field, or walking towards the horizon, whatever that is. It's not going to end. You're never going to get there because that's how a horizon works. If you're looking out to, um, to like the sunset, for instance, you see the horizon line, but you can't ever reach there. And if you walk and walk and walk for miles, <laughs> um, he's cute, right? If you walk for miles, you'll never get there because the horizon always recedes. But you can keep moving towards it and it too will keep receding. But that's movement. Now the other thing that you can do as you move through the world is take a certain step in one direction. I think there's a bug and that's what he's seeing somehow, or just dancing. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so you can take a step in one direction and that would be making a choice. And the way that I see it, it's like if I think of a focal point in this little frame where there's a horizon, right? If you focus on one point, that's you making the decision to go one step closer to there. But if you go one step closer in this direction, that is where things will be focused. Things will come more into more uh, crisp of a picture, like they actualize. So I decide I'm going to go to the grocery store. Yes, I do that. And look, I went to the grocery store and actualized. Great. Now, by me choosing to go this direction, that pushed all this other stuff over here a little bit out of focus, right? The focus goes here, this stuff blurs a little bit more. It's not completely out of the picture. You're just further away from it. So as you step closer to one, you might be further away from another, but that does not mean that you can't make another choice that slowly works your way back to this side, right? So this, of course, now means that we move side to side and also towards the horizon. Some things are impossible. Like, you can't choose to just jump up in the air and levitate. But regarding the other things that we can choose, um, we can move ourselves closer and closer to some things as we move further away from those. Okay, but that's boring. Now, 
these, this is definitely the case with micro, with uh, real decisions, right? Like, what are you going to, are you going to go to college? Okay, then what are you going to major in? And now you're going to get a job. And what job do you want to do? Well, depending on what college you went to and what major you decided, you might end up being a person who works at a zoo with the sea lions, or you might end up being an um, elementary school principal. I don't know. Somewhere along the way, though, choices were made that led to those routes being the ones that became po actualized. Those possibilities that lay before you all along the horizon are the ones that you eventually meet, realize, and they become crisp into focus. And then, as you step closer to these little things that become crisper into fo focus, new things open up, right? So if you make a step towards going to college, majoring in biology or something, and becoming someone who works with animals, then new possibilities will come up where you might meet other people who work with animals and then they become, I don't know, even your, you know, your best friends or they introduce you to something else that just really turns you on to rock climbing. And then as you get into rock climbing, you blah, 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 blah. You see the story, right? With each step, new things open up. But all of those steps are little choices. So I said those are big choices, but they all break down the big choices into little decisions little choices. I call those micro decisions. Micro decisions are the ones that we make at every moment of our life, whether or not we realize it, whether or not we're intentional with them, and whether or not we want to. Even if you avoid making choices, you're going to be making the choice to avoid them, to avoid moving in some direction, but that will close off some possibilities, make you be further away from some, and keep you closer to others. It just depends on where you want to be. So, um, this has something about, like, some, uh, free will issues, determinism, sort of, yeah, kind of, but not in the sense that we have ultimate free will, where anything's possible, because, as I'm saying, you make choices and it moves you closer to some, but it also isn't determinism, like, as if God determines it, because we set our own path based on the micro decisions and the big decisions, the choices that we make. There's freedom involved here, the freedom to choose, but with that also comes uh, responsibility. Okay, but that's getting ahead of ourselves. I'm going to refer to this book, Simone de Beauvoir's The Ethics of Ambiguity. This isn't really old copy that I have, but it's a really excellent book. Um, she talks about this existential coming of, uh, coming to an awareness about the existential possibilities that lay before us in our lives by referring to, like, children. So children... Oftentimes we think, oh, the, our parents are here, the world is the way it is because it's just the way that it is. Sometimes we think that God is making it so, and we walk into the world with it ready-made, pre-given, and all the things that we lay before us are determined. But then, around adolescence or so, this is the way the story goes, people start to realize that, oh, you know what, all the stuff that's around me, the houses, the customs, the uh, cultures, the language, everything is all human-made. We are responsible for how the world works. And so that means the world has been set up based on decisions and choices that other people have made. It's not God, then. It's humans. And you know what that means? I'm a human. I have choices. I'm also the one setting up this world. Now, how do I want to set up the world? How do I want to build up my life? That can be paralyzing. That's called the existential crisis. When you realize that the values the options, the purpose, the goals are not going to be pre-given to you. No one else is going to choose them or decide them for you, but you have to do it yourself. And that takes some amount of ownership and uh, stepping up to the task to say, yes, I will choose to build my life in this particular way. And yes, I recognize that I'm the one responsible for making the choices. Okay, so reading from Beauvoir, she explains this as, as the following. Moral choice is free and therefore unforeseeable. The child does not contain the man that he will become, yet it is always on the basis of what he has been that a man decides upon on what he wants to be. That's moving closer to the possibilities based on where we've now moved um, prior to this point in time. He draws the motivations of his moral attitude from within the character which he has given himself and from within the universe which it is its correlative. Now the child sets up his character in this universe little by little, without foreseeing its development. He was ignorant of the disturbing aspect of this freedom which he was heedlessly exercising. 
He tranquilly abandoned himself to whims, laughter, tears, and anger, which seemed to him to have no moral and no danger, and yet which left imprints about him. The drama of original choice is that it goes on moment by moment for an entire lifetime, that it occurs without reason, before any reason, that freedom is there as if it were present only in the form of contingency. This contingency recalls, in a way, the arbitrariness of the grace distributed by God and Calvinistic doctrine. Here, too, there is a sort of predestination, issuing not from an external tyranny, but from the operation of the subject itself. Only, we think that man has always a possible recourse to himself. There is no choice so unfortunate that he cannot be saved. Okay, so that's talking about, in this book, The Ethics of Ambiguity, about the way that we make our decisions, we set up these patterns, we set up our directions in life without even knowing it, based on the micro decisions that we go through and choose day by day, even before we have our existential crisis. Okay. <coughs> now, here's the final consideration with all of this. If we are free to make choices and decisions, and that this is going to lead us into certain directions, and we have to make those choices and decisions in order to set up a purpose or a goal for ourselves that's not going to be given, then we create the meaning of our lives. It's up to us to choose, to decide, and it's the movement itself of going towards some purpose, some goal, even if it's the goal for the week, and then the goal for the year, and then what you want to do with the rest of your life, that's a big one. That's hard to decide. But if you move towards it, it's in the movement that you find the meaning of your life, the purpose. That is where the vitality comes from, where the risks come from, where the challenges come from. And you know what? We're probably going to fail. But that, too, is part of the risk. And that's something that we assume when we decide that I am going to be the one to choose to set up a purpose, a meaning for my life. I'm going to be the one responsible for it. We have the freedom to make these decisions. But the kicker is that it's not a radical freedom, but instead that I'm free, you're free, other people make decisions, and we are affected by the decisions that other people make, and other people are affected by the decisions and choices that we make. So responsibility comes into there, a sort of ethical consideration about how to make these choices. It's not that we can just do whatever we want and there's no punishment because now God's not the one saying that was the wrong choice. But what it means is that when we make a choice, our choices have consequences for others and for ourselves. And the way that we need to try to monitor or evaluate what choices will be good for us, what choices will work for um, helping us live our lives, will be those that also open up possibilities for others. So if I make a choice that forecloses the possibility for you to pursue your own projects, your own purposes, and your own goals that will preclude the p continued movement of your own life. That will be a choice that closes upon your freedom and it closes my own because my freedom is wrapped up in yours. The choices I make affect you. Your choices affect me. Without both of those elements together, nothing's going to happen. There will be stagnation. That will be the real meaninglessness, the loss of life. So that means that we are responsible for each other and for ourselves. And so if we're sitting around feeling lost and confused, we don't need to worry about making right or wrong decisions. We just need to be worried about whether or not we're making movement, movement that opens up more possibilities in other places. Ta-da! <laughs> 